What's going on, Sumolings? Thank you for joining us for another product walkthrough webinar. I am Lindsay and I am joined by the team over at Subhub. Subhub is a platform that enables users to build, host, and manage membership and subscription sites, including content and payment. It is starting right now on AppSumo for just $99 for a lifetime deal. Um, before we dive into the walkthrough, I just wanna tell y'all a few quick things. The first is that if you have any uh, questions, um, you can leave those questions in the Q&A box down below the video. We will circle back to those questions at the end of the walkthrough. Um, if you want to tell us a little bit about your use case or you want to tell us a little bit about why you're interested in Subhub, go ahead and tell us that in the chat room. We'd love to hear from you and uh, and be able to speak to your actual use case. Uh, and then the third thing is that um, there will be a replay of this available. So if you need to step out, you can. Uh, no big deal. You can watch it as many times as you want. All right. Um, Bev, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Lindsay. Great to be here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to you for the walkthrough. Um, again, Sumo Links, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those questions in the Q&A box below the video. Um, we will circle back to them, but we also have uh, Joan over there who will answer them for you as well. All right, Bev, you could take it away. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, to the webinar. I'm going to take you on a walkthrough of the platform starting with the homepage design editor, and then we will move on to functionality. So this, uh, this template here is what you will see. It's the default template. You will see this after you redeem, redeem your codes and get your website. And once you log in as administrator, you will come to the uh, dashboard of the control panel, and I'm going to head over to the home page editor. So this is my public home page from my test site that I've been working on. I've been doing some work on it. Just a word about the home pages. In a membership website, you're going to want to configure a couple of different home pages. The public one obviously is for uh, the general public when they come to your site, that's what they'll see. And the member homepage is the one that your logged in members will be directed to immediately upon logging in. So obviously you're going to have a little different content, a little different messaging on both of those homepages. You can also have actually customized homepages for uh, to apply to different member groups if you have different audiences that you are uh, targeting content to when they log in you can direct them to an individual customized home page so i am just going to stick with the public one for right now and i'm going to go into sections and into the top navigation area, because this is where you will upload your logo. Probably one of the first things people want to do on their <laughs> website. So you would simply uh, click the browse button and the upload image to upload your logo. This top navigation covers this whole header area here. And when you come down here, you can Click on the menus and top menu and configure your top menu here. Now, if you are, if you happen to be working in your member homepage, you will do the same thing. I'm going to um, configure that one and you can, if you want, you can upload a separate logo that will show on throughout the site when uh, your members are logged in and you can also configure and you probably will want to configure slightly different uh, top level link <clears throat> excuse me links for your member homepage. this my account link shows to all members whenever they are logged in and this allows them to do certain things they go into manage subscriptions and cancel a subscription or upgrade or purchase a new one um, they can see what courses they've purchased, uh, things that they've ordered in the store, change their password, etc. 
So I'm going to go back to my public home page and just show you a little bit about how some of these uh, sections were created. These first three were done using the default banner section. And you see these labels correspond to the sections over here in the uh, design panel. And this top one is called Launch Your Business. I renamed it. It was just called Banner before. And all these sections you can rename, duplicate, hide, or delete. To edit them, you click on the pencil icon and um, just add your image and your text. I'm going to add a new one just to show you. And when you add a new section, it arrives down just above the footer. And what I like to do is just move it up to closer to where I want it to be. And if I'm going to work on it, I will, if I wanted to recreate this one, I would just simply, this is just a matter of changing out the background image. And I can change the text, etc. This is an embedded video. So if I wanted to have a video background, I could. This is uh, actually an uploaded video. And I can remove these texts and things if I want. But I'm going to keep them on. And if I click on the embed, I can embed my video. And this one I took just from YouTube, but you can embed from pretty much any, any of the video hosts. And in that case, I would get rid of these. If I just wanted to show a standalone video. And the other thing I could do is play with the section width too. So it's not a uh, full width video. So those are just a couple of things. The other possibility, of course, with this is just click background color and create a background, colored background. It didn't quite show up. So let's try that again. Here's my banner. background color. Here we go. Whoops, the background color is not quite showing up. But this one was created with that background color change. So let's save. Let's see. Okay, so that just shows you some of the, uh, some things that you can do with that banner um, section. These two sections were created with the two column layout. We have a two column layout, we have a three column layout and a four column layout. If you want to add a column layout in sections, just click the showcase. your two column layout and basically you where did I put it? There we go. And you can essentially just play with the background colors, make it a back this section a background image. This is done by column, change out the text, 
um, add an image. I like to add icons sometimes to these. This is the image uploader for these. Get a little smaller. So you get the idea. And again, you can also play with the uh, content widths on these to create something more along this line. And then the same idea with the four column layouts. And there is another uh, sort of specialty section that uh, is often used uh, called the articles section. That's what this is. It provides a uh, sort of a blog roll of um, articles and that are already in the website. And you can use either the, uh, have them displayed either by date published or title. And I'm going to just quickly um, click view as visitor. That lets you see your work you've done and these are the three articles in my site uh, that were created most recently. So I'm just going to get out of that and click here to exit the editor. And I'm going to log back into the control panel. Sec. And uh, I'm going to talk about some functionality now. The basic, the primary functionalities in this platform have to do with the subscription plans in the member groups and articles and categories. So member groups are your audiences. You may only have one. You might just have members versus non-members, but quite often you might have different target audiences that you're providing different content for. So the first thing, <coughs> excuse me, we actually do <coughs> is go to the member manager and get our member groups in here. Now for mine, I've I'm creating sort of a bit of a marketing website here. So I've uh, targeted three different member groups, agency, entrepreneur, webmaster. And this is just a matter of typing these in one per line and save. And then we go to the subscription plans and we create our plans. Now I have a few here. Uh, created one for the entrepreneur group and essentially it's just uh, putting the title in and um, your visitors will see this title on the subscri subscription page. Set your payment frequency. Is it a recurring payment or not? If you type in a promo code that will mean that no one, <clears throat> no one can see this particular subscription plan unless they have the promo code and apply it. It's probably going to be available to everyone, although you could make these plans only available to members. Um, put in your amount uh, that you're going to charge for the plan. Uh, I have it in USD, but you can select, um, you can allow your people to purchase in their own currency. And then you select the member group that this subscription plan will apply to. So now that you've done that, we need a way to associate the member group with the content that you want them to access. For that, we use articles and categories. So we go into categories and I created one called branding here. And this is not much more than just typing in the category title and that's really about it. Save. 
and publish. You'll see most of the time on any of the articles or anything that you're publishing, there's a save and publish requirement, just by the way. And then we go to articles and we tag the articles we want to go with the categories. So I have created a couple of branding related articles here. And for example, on this one, what I've done is I filled out this teaser section and this is the excerpt or what will show on the category page for branding for this article, which when somebody clicks through, if they have access, they will see the full body of the article. Now these can be, um, this is just an image and some text. We can also upload a video, which I've done here. And we just go into this area to upload a video. And this is an embedded video and use the same icon, click embed and put your embed code in there. And on this article, on all articles, we have um, fields for title and description tags for SEO. And you allow your access. I want members only to see this and I can click whichever ones I want or all. You might have an article that you want to one or two of your member groups to have access to. And then select the uh, category, save, publish now. So I'm just gonna log out real quick and just show you what some of this looks like on the front end. I'm going to log in as a member. So I'm going to log in as Sally Smith because I happen to know she is an entrepreneur member. And I'm going to go to the branding category and go to Branding 101. And she is not uh, eligible to see this one because I had set this to agency. So this is the message that she gets. And you can configure these messages as well um, on the inside. So I'm gonna log out as Sally, you get the idea if I were John Smith who had signed up to the agency um, membership group, I would be able to click through and see that article. Now I'm just going to log back in as admin. And show you a few more things. Um, we have a settings section and there's quite a few things in here. Um, the site title is what will show on your tab here. This is a site description for the entire site. You can upload um, sitemap and Google verification file. Um, you of course click that to yes. You have various display options here, uh, uploading a favicon, setting the how many um, teasers you want to show on your homepage. Uh, and there is an advanced settings down here for JavaScript and uh, some Google, Analy Google Analytics tags and things like that if you want to uh, put some script in there that will apply site-wide and we have some boilerplate for you for terms and conditions, privacy, cookie policy, that sort of thing. And you configure your uh, contact page information there. 
This is where you set those messages for people who don't have access. You can configure your subscription page as well as far as what you want to, uh, what information you want to collect. This is the payment processor section. You put your Stripe and PayPal keys in there and the integrations area for MailChimp, um, a few other integrations, pick, uh, Facebook Pixel ID and uh, Open Graph for Facebook for your preview image if you want to set a default one. And uh, just a couple of other things and then I'm going to log out again. Um, there's other functionality in here um, giving you quite a bit of flexibility in terms of how to display your content. The, you can have downloads and what we do is we have a downloads folder that you upload your actual file to and then when you go into your articles you um, create the link. I've used an image here and essentially you were just putting in the, um, the relative URL to the actual download here with a slash download at the end of it and that will prompt when someone clicks on this image that will prompt them to uh, directly download that file that you uploaded. Object content, this allows, uh, allows you to schedule content for people who have signed up to a course and I'll show you that real quick on the front end too. Um, so we have store, we can sell store products, uh, physical products or digital downloads. We can also sell pay-per-view products and that allows you to sell a piece of online content. And uh, once it just looks like a regular store item, but when someone purchases it, they get a email with the link to view the content. And you can also determine for how long they get to see it um, and how many times they get to see it. And we have some, some reports back here. Um, that let you know what is going on with your members. So I'm just going to log out and just show you um, a couple of these. This page here will show the general public any courses that are available and allow them to purchase. This is the store. This is the subscribe page that will show all the subscriptions that are available for purchase. You have a promo code. It will show up. I think I have one in there. Yeah. So that, that um, appears if you have the promo code. And I'm just going to log in as Sally. Jones, just to show you that I love you. course. You know, she comes in here and she signed up for a course. So if she comes in here and clicks my courses, she can access the course. And these are the uh, articles that I have tagged to be part of this course. And I had set all these in the scheduling function to zero so that they will all show up uh, as soon as she logs in. If I had set some of them to one, two, three, or four, one day, two days, three days, four days, or weeks or months, then those articles will appear later on. And as the member, uh, Sally will get an email notification when new content is available. And if she looks at this and, oh, Sally's not actually 
okay, I'm, I'm in the wrong member. Sally's not actually entitled to this. So anyway, if she did, let's see. She should be. Okay. Well, I didn't uh, obviously set this up exactly right, but um, you get the idea. She will be able to access the course. And once she has seen it, the, the dot will fill in. So that is essentially what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I think you can see there's a fair amount of functionality in here in terms of um, directing people to your content and uh, I'm sure there are questions so with that I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay. Yeah we uh, can we hear me? Yes. Okay uh, we do have some questions here thank you everybody and if you have any questions you can go ahead and leave those in the Q&A box. Um, they are that, that's gonna be down below the video. Um, all right, so I'm gonna just start up at the top here. Um, do courses show a progress index, index for the learner to track where they are in the course? Not in terms of, uh, you know, if they're, if they're looking at a video and, and then they come back later and the video is still at the same position or something like that, basically uh, it's, it's lesson by lesson, if they have seen the lesson, that little dot will be filled in. If they haven't seen it, but it's there for them, the dot will be empty. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, is there a maximum number of sessions a course can be divided into? No, I don't think so. Joanne, are you there? I think she's typing answers to things. She's typing? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm here. Sorry. I've, I've been answering a lot of questions from the participants. <laughs> yep. There is no, there is no limit. All right. Is there any guidance in your support documents um, about idea sizes for logos and other graphics? Um, there is, uh, where, where needed, we basically will say, um, so I go in here to the logo area. It doesn't give a, um, actual ideal um, I, size but i think I it's about 300 pixels yeah for the for the logo it's 300 ideally it's 300 pixels uh, and uh, if it is more than 300 pixels this the platform will, will resize it for you to 300 pixels or you can upload your logo uh, to a specific size uh, and for the banner ideally uh, you have to upload not less than 1280 pixels yeah, the ideal for the banner size is suggested image dimensions on the banner, 2880 by 1200. Awesome. Uh, is it possible to sell group memberships if a company buys a membership plan to allow, for example, 10 employees to sign up for that plan? You can. We do have um, something called redemption codes that might be good for that. Um, these are one-time codes, kind of similar to the Absimo codes, actually. Uh, they're one-use codes. So if you had a, a group, um, a school or some, a company that purchases a subscription plan, um, you could give them, you could generate some, co some redemption codes and they could share those with their members. All right. Is there a way to use codes to further customize sections? Um, code like uh, HTML or CSS? Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, there is in here. In general settings, we have a custom CSS 
area there. And then um, also in the settings, the display options in the settings, there is a um, code box for CSS as well. Cool. Um, is your video player secure to prevent download? Um, Joanne, do you want to take that one? Yeah, the, the, the video play, all the, all the uploaded videos are, have an expiration, have an expiration on them. So uh, I think the expiration is two hours after that, uh, you will not be able to access the video. Awesome. Um, all right, how many, and we're just breezing through these. Thanks for being so concise. Uh, how many instructors or teachers are allowed? Is there a teacher login dashboard so they can set up their own course? There isn't. Um, you, what you can do is, um, the only thing that you can actually do there would be create, you wanted to create admins in here. You can give them different roles, um, but there, that doesn't really apply so much to um, the courses. So it's really just set up for one instructor. Great. Uh, am I hosting videos on the site? And they asked again about the prevention of downloading. You can host videos on the site up to four gig. All right. Um, I sell to schools. Can student logins be created that don't show my purchases, et cetera, on their accounts? You're pretty much restricted to these roles here. Um, but you can as set up your articles and your content for um, uh, viewing just by certain uh, member groups. So if you had a particular desire for a certain type of member to only see certain things, um, you could do that within the articles, uh, but not within the rest of the structure. All right. Once a member cancels their membership, can they still have access to some of the courses or do they get removed from the entire platform? After they cancel, they would have access until the end of that cycle. However, you can override that by expiring them in the member manager. Cool. Can the language be changed? And they ask specifically for German. Uh, we don't uh, support multiple languages. Um, I believe you might be able to use Google Translate. All right. Um, can classes within courses be grouped into categories? Um, Joanne, do you know the answer to that? Sorry, what, what is the question again? Can classes within courses be grouped into categories? No, you can't group uh, them into categories. All right. Can pages be duplicated? There is not a duplicate button. Nope. All right. Um, how do you force single logins? I mean, to avoid cheating when a member resells his or her private login credentials. I think Joanne can answer that. Yeah, we have uh, we have that functionality where uh, you can prevent a user from sharing logins. Awesome. Do you offer a DPA? Don't know what that is, so I'm going to ask Joanne to answer I don't, that. I don't either. I'm, <laughs> yeah, not. I'm not sure what's DPA too. John, if you want to go ahead and let us know, we're so sorry. Um, all right, what is the URL used to access the content? Is it my own domain URL or is it something based on the host? When you first uh, sign up, you will get a URL uh, using your name dash, uh, dot site dot subhub dot com. And then whenever you're ready, whenever you want to, you can um, 
we'll, we'll point a custom domain. How are webinars integrated? Can they be part of the course and show in the student's <laughs> listing? Um, webinars can be linked to, um, if you wanted to use Zoom or something like that. Um, you can also just embed uh, code into an article. So you could conceivably um, use Vimeo or All right. Webinar Jam has it. Oh, my internet connection might be unstable. I'm sorry if that broke out. Um, does the software support payments with PayPal or does it also support payments with credit card? Both. Cool. Is there a way to track affiliate sales? We have an integration with iDev Affiliate. Um, there it is here. So you would need to sign up with their cloud service and they would then provide um, affiliate links for you. All right, how will the system know that somebody attended the webinar? Uh, the system probably would not. No, I don't think that would be um, where, whoever you're uh, hosting that web webinar with. Can I grant access if payment is taken outside of Subhub? Sure, yes. In uh, the member manager, you can add your own members and give them whatever access you want. All right, sorry if uh, I missed this, but can you show what the member view slash products would look like in the dashboard? Uh, what the products looks like. Yeah. So this is uh, where you would add your products. Give it a name. Is it a physical product download or an article? That would be for a pay-per-view product. Um, give it an image. You can provide a member discount if you want. Um, and there is a place you need to configure the store actually first with uh, confirmation email, etc. cetera. Um, and then, yeah, I can show it to you on the outside again, if you like. Um, so this is the public view. And it would be essentially the same core member. And check out. Cool. Um, all right, so this person asks, what kind of information on your site will be in English from your end, even if they make the membership site Spanish? Well, anything that is part of the platform. Um, so anything that would be Spanish would, would be what you would type in. All right. Um, DPA is data protection agreement. Thanks, John. Uh, so do you <laughs> offer a data protection agreement? Do we offer a data protection agreement, Joanne? I am, I'm not sure uh, if that is different from GDPR, but I think uh, you can reach out, they can reach out to our support desk to uh, give them an exact answer. I cannot uh, answer it right now. All right. Um, I was hoping to have add-on courses sold alongside a membership program, and if people cancel the membership, that user still gets access to the add-on courses. Is there a way to only partially remove a user's access? Not that I know of. All right. Can members log in over VPN? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> 
Uh, is there a charge to use your cart slash can we integrate with Thrivecart? There is no charge and I believe we can. Cool. Uh, can you force a user to have an account or create an account before doing anything on the site? Um, to create an account before doing anything on the site. You can create, you would then create a um, free membership um, and then let them using this uh, sign up for more stuff. All right. Um, does each course have its own landing page? Uh, yes, yeah, it's a, a cur that curriculum page. Yes, right. the user come in. They're the person to come in late. Uh, sorry if I missed it. Is there a fee we pay with each transaction? No, you're just going to pay um, Stripe and PayPal fees, not us. Can we use with Mail Auto Responder? Sorry, what was that? Can we use with a mail auto responder? Uh, MailChimp. All right, I have annual subscribers, but the renewal is not automatic. Users must opt in for their annual subscription to be authorized and renewed. Users are sent one email, are sent emails one month in advance of their subscription expiration to prompt them to approve renewal. How does the platform handle this use case? Uh, if they don't sign up on the website, um, then you're, you're going to have to basically handle it manually, I think. Um, for for the, the platform to handle them, they need to be in, in the system. Awesome, awesome. I, I think we got through all of the questions here in the Q&A box. Um, if anybody, so does it get renewed automatically? That was a follow-up question. Um, if, if they have signed up or you've signed them up to a renewable annual subscription, yes. All right, and how are support tickets handled? Support tickets are handled through our support desk at support at subhub.com. All right, and Sumo Langs, if you have any other questions, you can go ahead and leave those in the Q&A box down below the video. I just wanted to ask you because I know that this is important to Sumo Langs. Um, can you tell us about your roadmap and what you're looking forward to? Sure, I have a roadmap here. Um, so we're going to be adding uh, additional homepage section layouts very soon. Uh, currently we don't have variant options in the store so we'll be adding that and then later on um, in the fall and winter we will be launching a public API and uh, a Zapier integration and a couple of other things here. It's, I believe this is um, this link is available. Joanne to the roadmap? Yes the that's a public All right. Uh, if a member cannot log in, does it go to Subhub or to me? It will go to you. And if you have any issues, come to us. All right. And are you planning other integrations? Um, yeah, what other integrations do you have on the roadmap? Or can you highlight those for us? Um, Zapier, Vimeo API, anything else, um, Joanne? Well, it depends on, uh, that, is, that is what we have right now uh, for the year, but also it, it depends on the number of requests uh, for an integration to get bumped up uh, or to get uh, into the, uh, to get it's into the good. plan this year. All right, and uh, which plan, um, of yours, does the AppSumo plan most closely near? Um, it's a bit of a hybrid, actually. Um, I think it would probably, in terms of 
uh, storage, if you're at three codes, it's essentially the top level plan. Um, otherwise, it's probably closer to the starter or the middle plan. Excellent. All right. Um, those are all the questions that we have, but they keep coming in. So I feel like I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to stall just a little bit. Um, but thank you, Sumo Links, for all of these wonderful questions. Um, and I, all right, that's it. That's all we're going to do. Um, all right. Thank you so much, Sumo Links, for joining us today and, uh, walk, walk, watching this walkthrough I can speak. Um, <laughs> if you have not already, you can redeem your code for Subhub at appsumo.com slash Subhub. Uh, again, it is starting at just $99 for a lifetime deal. Um, and it is backed, of course, by AppSumo's 60-day guarantee. So you can go ahead, get set up, play around with it, and let us know how it's working for you and your community. Um, if you have any more questions, go ahead and leave those on the deal page. But of course, we definitely want to hear in the comments um, all of the wonderful things that you are creating with Subhub. Um, thank you so much, Bev and Joanne, for being here today and getting through all of these questions and showing us everything. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody have a good one. Thanks, everybody. Bye.